I'll bet that most of you learned in grade school the acronym, the acronym HOMES represents Huron, Ontario, Michigan, Erie, and Superior. But I'll bet that most of you don't know that the Great Lakes encompass 94,676 square miles. It has 10, 000, they have 10,000 miles of coastline equal to the east and west coast of the United States. Michigan alone has 3,200 miles of coastline. Only Alaska has more. Oh. Madam Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters and honored guests, I recently read this book by Jerry Dennis, The Living Great Lakes, and I became impassioned about the Great Lakes. I wanted to learn everything I could about them. I even, I had to go to a conference at the Library of Michigan, talking about the Librarian Geek today, and I bought the poster, Bob, Bob passed out some of the postcards that I picked up there. So I thought, I did a little bit more research after reading the book, and which I highly recommend to everybody. But I did some more research, and tonight I'd like to share with you a little bit about the geology of the Great Lakes, how they were formed, how they, how they came about, which I'm sure you'll remember some of it, but not everything. I hope I can give you a little more information, and also I have a little bit more information about the Great Lakes. The Great Lakes Basin was formed during the Precambrian era, about three billion years ago. At that time, there was a lot of volcanic activity on the Earth, and a lot of stresses in the Earth, so great mountain systems were formed. Volcanic and sedimentary, sedimentary deposits that were present at that time resulted in rich mineral deposits still found around the Great Lakes area. At that time, the only existing life forms were algae, fungi, and bacteria. Then came the Paleozoic era, which, which lasted three, around 300 million years. At that time, marine seas repeatedly flooded the North Central America. The seas brought new life forms like corals, mollusks. The floods also brought muds, clays, salt, sand. And at this time, the first fish, insects, reptiles, conifers, and tree ferns appeared on Earth. Then the Mesoic era came. That was another 167 million years. At that time, that's when the dinosaurs, mastodons, flowering plants appear, some birds and mammals, and the de decomposition of those plants and animals added to the rich mineral resources found in the Great Lakes area. <clears throat> then came the Ice Age, or the Pleistocene era. That lasted, that came during the last two million years. And at that time, continental glaciers it advanced from the north over the north over the Great Lakes region. The glaciers were up to a mile and a half thick, or 6,500 feet. They scoured the whole earth and dug deep depressions into the land, and that's what caused the large Great Lakes basins. That's when they were formed, and uh, the so the pre-ice age uh, ecosystem was altered forever at that point. Then thousands of years passed. Now this part I remember, that the climate's warm, the glaciers start shrinking, and this repeats over and over. There were interglacial periods of vegetation and wildlife returned, and the last glacial advance was about 25,000 years ago. Lovely picture, huh? The last withdrawal of the glaciers occurred around 11,000, 15,000 years ago, and that's when your modern humans, saber-toothed tigers, and mammoths, mammoths appeared the first grasslands and forests were developed. The weight of the glaciers were so heavy that they caused huge depressions in the land, but as the glaciers, uh, as the, the glacial lakes formed when the glaciers started to melt, but later the glaciers started to recede, the land started to rise. And that resulted in changes in the sizes and the depth and the drainage patterns of the lake. So the present Great Lakes are smaller because of the rising land and they're still evolving to the north. Now that I've told you a little bit about how the Great Lakes were formed, I thought I'd give you all a little bit of information about each Great Lake. Lake Michigan is the only Great Lake contained entirely in the United States, so it is the largest lake in the United States. Lake Michigan and Lake Huron are joined at the Straits of Mackinac, which I knew that, but I didn't realize that all the rest of the lakes are joined like through rivers or wa other waterways, not, not, it, not like Lake Michigan or Lake Huron are. Then Lake Superior, whose annual water temperature is 40 degrees. It's the world's largest freshwater lake, 
by surface only. Lake Bacall in uh, Russia is, is larger, deeper, has more volume, I should say. And to give you an idea of how old these lakes are, Lake Bacall is 25,000 years old, and they, they think Superior is about 10,000 years old. And it, it contains more water than all the other Great Lakes combined and 10% of all the Earth's fresh water. Now, this is something I absolutely didn't know. I found this fascinating that, well, Lake Huron does not have any major metropolises on its, on its coast at all, but it does boast the Manitoulin Island, which is the largest freshwater lake in the world. Freshwater island in the world. Then we come to Lake Erie, which is the southernmost, shallowest, and smallest by volume. It, it has, it's considered to have some of the best wildlife fishery in the world. And Pelee Island, which Canada boasts Pelee Island, is Canada's southernmost point is only three miles away from Ohio. Finally, Lake Ontario, that's the last of the Great Lake chains. And it is the outlet to the Atlantic Ocean, Ocean by way of the St. Lawrence Seaway. Its watershed boasts some of the most beautiful waterfalls in the world, mm -hmm. such as Niagara Falls here. Finally, here we are back at the HOMES acronym. And if you take anything away from this presentation, I hope you all can remember the Holmes Ackerman, Huron, Ontario, Michigan, Erie, and Superior.